For this video, we're going to take our first look at moving data into Azure. And for this, we're going to use Azure IoT Hub, which is a data collector or a central data collector that takes streams of data from end devices or nodes and pushes it to a storage location in Azure. This connectivity is, is relatively secure. We're going to continue using our um, Node Red projects that we've been working on, where we've been adding some sensors and bringing some values. And you can see here on the screen now, so if I just make this bigger, we are taking sensor data and using Python to push it out, and then we're splitting out the string arrays into individual values. And the bit that's important here is we're creating a JSON message. You can see my values on the right hand side. They're being stored in global memory area and we have created this JSON message. So very quickly, let's go through this. We are creating a tag called light average. We're getting the data from global memory area and pushing it into there. And then we are creating a message payload this bit here is just text. I could call this banana. So I could have banana one, two, three, four, five, but I've given it a name that means something. And then this is the process value I'm storing. So I've created this JSON message. If I click on this now and monitor it, if I go into the debug, you can see here, this is what my message payload looks like each time it comes in. So I'm averaging the data to slow down the data transmission light. I'm not interested in how fast it moves. I'm looking over time. I'm not really doing too much for it. It's just an example. What do we get on Node Red that we can use to push data into Azure? Well, if we go to Manage Palette, it's quite easy. Again, if we go to Install, I've already installed this. We go to Azure. You can see it here. Azure IoT Hub Mod is the one I have installed. So if we have a look at the help for this, and we get all of these different types of values. You can see here an example where they're pushing some information. Here's my message body. We'll come on to this. You will understand what this means as we progress through the video. So once you've downloaded it, it will be in your library. And you can see here all the different IoT hub instances. And we... I'm not looking at receiving data. We could do a hub device twin, but I think that's too complicated to start off with. So we're just going to use this one here, IoT hub, and then we need to get everything ready. So what does this need? It's going to need the host name of your IoT hub. We haven't set that up yet. We're going to do that in a minute and you'll get this. And then we have to formulate a message going into this like you've just seen in the help where we have our message body which has key information here for transmitting data to IoT Hub so connection keys device ID and the protocol we're going to use is MQTT and then the message payload is just the message payload the same as what we're pushing here in this example into Influence DB. So first of all, we need to set up a IoT hub on Azure. You can register for a free Azure account. If you just type it in, there's a relatively easy form to, to fill in on, and you get this free account. It's difficult for me because my company has its own Azure account. And every time I try and create a free one, I'd have to go onto a different PC. So I want to do all, everything within this video, but once you've registered for that free account, you should have a, a similar look and feel to what you've got on the screen at the moment. If you go here, you can go home, and depending on what you've been using, will depend on what comes up here. Now you can see here I have IoT Hub. I've, hi I've hid my recent, because I don't want you to see all the work that I'm doing. So if you clicked on recent, you would have your recent activity. But uh, by default, there'll be nothing there because you've got no, no history if you've never used it before. So if you just type in IoT and you can see here Hub comes up. 
I've already got an account set up. You do get a free IoT hub connection with with us all. Uh, so let's create our first free account. Decide, decide what region you want it in. So it depends where you live, of course. I'm going to try and find UK West because that's where I tend to put a lot of my things. Resource group. What's a resource group? A resource group is like a folder. So as we get going with this, we'll have an IoT hub connection. We might be pushing data to blob storage. Rather than having all of these you know, installed all over the place, we can create a folder where we keep everything nice and tidy. So let's create a new resource group and we'll call this... I will delete this after so I get in, don't get in trouble with work, but we'll call it YouTube for now. Right. Um, and then we need to give our IoT hub a name. Again, I'll give it the same name. Sometimes these names like you to all be lowercase. And you can see here tier, you know, standard. And you can see here this is how many messages I can receive a, a day into to that how much it costs. But you should have the option to go free. And I get 8,000 messages per day this is my daily limit and this is my cost per month zero so that's the one I'm going to go with you can't quite see it's off the bottom of my screen but I'm going to click on review and create which is down here it's come back it's happy with this so I'm going to create I'm going to delete this all after by the way so the first thing it's done is set up my my resource and if you go over here on the top look you'll see this alarm with a you know, uh, some indication across the bottom that means that something is happening so it's deploying my IOT hub my deployment has succeeded I can pin it to my dashboard if I want but let's see if it lets me go to my resource so here we have it and um, there's something happening um, here with Azure so just be careful if you're watching this video after 2025 um, We've just got to be careful of this action here, but for, for what we're doing now, it's fine. And as you can see, there's no daily messages or anything like that because we haven't made any connections. So the first thing that we need to do is have a device. So we've got the, you know, the IoT hub set up and we can have multiple devices connected to one IoT hub. And this is where having a, a device twin would be, would be really good. We're not going to do that now, we're going to keep it nice and simple. So if we go to devices, there should be nothing under there. And we're going to add a new device. We need to give it an ID. We'll call this Office Lights. And everything else we can keep default. So don't tick IoT Edge because we're in the cloud. Click save again. Sorry, it's off the bottom of the screen. And you'll see here now I have my office lights. I have everything now set up ready to program up Node Red with the information I need to get this communicating. So let's have a look at what we need to do next. So we need to first of all formulate our JSON message. So it has this body text that Azure needs for security purposes. Let's have a look at this function. You can see here the data is the message payload. But within that um, full message payload that we're creating now, so message payload equals device ID. So the device ID here is Office Lights. So let's put the S in, the end. Um, the protocol is MQTT. And then we need this key. Right? So this is the security key. Now to find that, if you go here to and click on your office lights within Azure, so I've got Azure on the right hand side, you can see here primary key. This is the one that we're looking for, I'm not going to show it you, so we'll copy that to a clipboard and we'll put that into this message body. So once we've done that, the message is, is ready, you can obviously deploy that. And then the next thing we need to do is connect to Azure with this connection here. So let's 
do a connection from a message payload and open up this node. So the protocol we're going to be using is MQTT. You can give this a name, this is just a text, but this host name we need to get from Azure. And if you look here, you have your full connection string. If I view this, at the beginning, you will have this HTTP address look. Right? And this is the bit that we need to cut and paste into here. Now what I can't remember is whether you need to put the HTTP in front. So what we'll do is we'll try it. I suppose that's probably the best way. So we'll do that. Let's get my debug up. Let's clear all of this. So we're waiting for my first message to come through. I'm averaging, I think, every minute or so. So we'll wait for this data to land. So here we go. My message has come through here. I can see this is my message. There's all my information. I will hopefully remember to, to grey this out so you can't see my key, but this is the message payload that I've just sent. And I can see here, Azure sent message and I have a success and I have a little blue icon. So I can start to use nodes to, to monitor that state, but let's have a look if I've seen anything land in Azure. So if I go to my IoT hub, I will see here now I've just received some messages and I can use that as an indication that I've seen some traffic but as I said it's not pushing it anywhere yet we need to use this message routing to do that but we can use a terminal to see the data coming in to IOT Hub so let's click on the terminal so you get different options for your terminal you can use Bash or PowerShell for Windows. So once you've connected you can use this command here to, to monitor the traffic coming into your IoT hub and then output that into a JSON format. So this, this needs to be changed to your IoT hub name and in this instance we called it YouTube. Don't forget it could be case sensitive so we've got YouTube here and then I'm just going to hit enter and now it's monitoring don't forget I'm not sending my data every second so I've got to wait for that uh, first message to to land so this terminal is quite good to make sure the data is getting from your device to us all so you've put in your your connection strings and everything else correct so I can see here look there's my message coming into Azure IoT hub. So what do we do next? Let's have a look at how we can push this JSON data into blob storage. Before we can start moving data, what we need to do is uh, generate a storage account. And again, you can see here it's under my services because I've been using it regularly. You can also type in storage and it will go to storage accounts. And when I go to my storage accounts for the first time, it will be empty. I've hidden a lot of the ones that I'm working on again. But it's the same procedure as before. We can create a storage account here. Our resource group we've already created. So if we find YouTube, we created that earlier on. It's in my subscription, which is Sandbox. So this is my company's subscription. Then we can give it a name. I'm keeping UK West. And then everything else is default. So we'll call this Office Lights. This is one of the occasions where I, I can't mess around with the caps and special characters. So, so we'll call that Office Lights. We'll preview this. happy we can click on create and again we get the same message up here it's deploying so this is where we can get trigger happy so we'll just wait for this to finish now we have the container set up the easiest way to to get data into that is using something called stream analytics so if we go home we can see here stream analytics jobs again you can type it in 
and you'll see here stream analytics jobs so once we're at the stage of open this we can create a new stream analytics job there are costs associated with this so just be careful and here we're going to use our same resource so everything's stored away quite nicely and then we will call the actual stream analytics job again YouTube that's for this video we'll keep the region the same spelled tube correctly and we're on the cloud but there's not much you have to do other than that we've reviewed it there's no errors and we'll create and the same again you'll see it here the uh, deployment is in progress so we just have to wait for that to finish on the screen now you can see the stream analytics job and we have to set up an input an output and we can then set a query up which will move the data from the input to the output now in our case the input is IOT hub and the output is blob storage so let's have a look at our inputs we will add an input to IOT hub and then we will call this again I'm going to call this node red because that's where it's coming from and you can see here now I can select my IOT hub it's, uh, it's YouTube I have to tell it my encoding but other than that there's nothing else to do so we've added the input as part of the setup it will test it as well so it will make sure that it's got a good connection to that so we can see here that's, that connection is good so the next part is to set up an output so we'll go to the outputs select output Blob storage is the easiest way to store our data. It's going to be stored in our container or storage account that we've already created. So you can see here storage account. So let's find the office lights that were created. Then we'll give it a name. I think here, keep it all lowercase. Uh, don't try and be too clever with your name. We're going to use a connection string for for our um, authentication anything else down here we don't need to to edit and we just need to give it a name so this is our name for the output it will only be used here in stream analytics so we've added the output and now it's testing the output so we're happy now we've got the input has got a successful connection and the output has got a successful connection but really the brains behind this is the query builder so we can see here I have a, an input and an output but my query hasn't got any information so we need to just edit this with our information so it's coming from node red as you type that in you see look it will the text underneath will disappear and we're going to push it into office lights and it is case sensitive so I can see there that's good so if I now click on node red this is my data coming from my IOT hub I can see it here and I can test this query so what's this going to do it's going to make sure that the data is going from the input to my output and I can click on my output and I can see the data and the data type I can I can do something a bit more trendy here using some SQL query language it's a uh, an Azure version of SQL query if you want some help it's here in the query language but if you wanted to you can um, start moving your data around if you didn't want to bring everything from your input to output you only wanted to bring it something when it exceeded a value then you could start writing some queries here but we'll leave it like that we're going to save the query but we still don't have stream analytics running so we go to overview at the top and you can see here it's created we've tested it in the query you must do that first and when you're happy that your query is functioning correctly you can click on start you'll have some other options here if you stop and start so you can carry on with your data stream as you left it but we'll just start it's the first time we're starting it so after a while it will start 
and we will see our utilization here. Now, I don't think this is free, and it's a real gray area for me using stream analytics on Azure, what the actual costs are. So I will leave that up to a better person. It becomes really cost effective when you've got multiple nodes out in the field connecting to this. So we'll let that start and then we'll have a look at the data in our storage location. So I can see now that my, my stream analytics is, is running. I haven't got any event counts yet because don't forget it's sending my data every minute. And I will probably stop this after this video. But let's just see where that data has gone. So rather than trying to, to find my files all over the place, what I've done now is I've opened my resource that I created, YouTube, and this just shows you how it puts everything in a neat place for you. So I have my IoT hub, I have my stream analytics job, and I have my storage location all under my one resource. And if I click on my office lights now to go into that resource, I need to go to my containers, and you can see here is the container that I've got Stream Analytics to create, and then there's the JSON file. So if I click on this, you get these little uh, three little dots, and then we'll view this data. And you can see here now, here is my um, payload. So I can see my process values, and then it then stamps it with the UTC time. This is an Azure function, so you'd need to convert that if you were using it elsewhere. So there you have it. My data has now gone from Node-RED into Azure blob storage and we'll look at how we can use this data in something to visualize it, which will most likely be Power BI Desktop to start off with, but we'll cover that in the next video. But for now, I hope you found that useful. As per usual, please share this uh, channel with your friends and colleagues and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening.